focus breathing. You might not be getting everything out of your lenses that you expect to get. So I'm going to show you what focus breathing is, how to test it and actually how to fix it. First of all, if you focus any lens at infinity and it's a 200 millimeter lens, it'll probably be 200 millimeters or 70 millimeters or whatever. Every lens tends to focus at infinity at whatever they have marketed it as. Lenses tend to be true when focused at infinity. Here's a picture taken with the Nikon 7200F2.8, uh, the G Mark II, that's the lens I'll refer to a lot, versus the Canon. They, the Nikon had severe focus breathing, it's the previous generation, and the Canon did not, but you can see at a distance, they're about the same focal length. Where focus breathing causes a problem is when you're focusing up close. Here you can see, I just took a picture of a ruler. On the left, you have a picture taken at the same distance with the Canon 70 200 f2.8 at 200 millimeters. And on the right, you have the Nikon 70 200 f2.8G at 200 millimeters with the same body. I put them on a Sony body, so we just have that. Uh, and you can see, you can see about uh, 16 inches of ruler with the Nikon lens at 200 millimeters, whereas you can only see a little over 10 inches of ruler on the Canon at 200 millimeters. And that doesn't make any sense, right? They're both 200 millimeters. They should have the same, same angle of view. If they're at the same distance, you should see the same amount of the subject, but you didn't. And this is kind of baffling, right? This isn't something that everybody knows about. The effect is called focus breathing. Let's look at some other examples. Here's an example from one of our videos. The picture at the top was taken with the Canon 7200 at 200 millimeters. The picture at the bottom was taken with the Sigma 150 to 300 or 120 to 300 at 300 millimeters. So the picture on the bottom, which is a little bit wider angle, as you can see your head's a little smaller, is at 300 millimeters. That's how severe the focus breathing on the Sigma 120 to 300 is. And if you want detailed information, you can watch our entire reviews of these because we've covered this over and over again in the past. Why would a 200 millimeter lens be longer than a 300 millimeter lens? It's absurd. Nobody advertises this, nobody talks about it, but it's kind of a big deal. Here's another shot with the Tamron, 24 to 70 versus the Nikon 24 to 70. This time it's the Nikon that does not breathe. You can see the Nikon image on the left is much closer than the Tamron image on the right. Again, that's in our full review. So if you watch it, you already know this, but if you get the Tamron 24 to 70 and you try to take a picture of something up close, it's more like 45 millimeters. If you get the Nikon, the 7200 F2AG Mark II, the previous generation, and you try to shoot something up close, it's not 200 millimeters. When you have it marked 200 millimeters, it's like 132 millimeters. Here's a picture showing the, the Canon, which does not breathe on top, versus the Tamron 7200 F2.8, which does breathe on the bottom. And you can see I'm at the same distance, but Chelsea's, it it's, seems much tighter. Her head is bigger in the top picture because the Canon's at a true 200, 200 millimeters, while the Tamron is at, mm, around 165 millimeters for that particular lens. So when we were doing our testing for these lenses, we just found so many of them weren't actually 200 millimeters when you start shooting up close, but they were 200 millimeters at infinity. And again, this is called focus breathing. It's baffling, especially it's un kind of unforgivable on portrait lenses where you're going to be shooting up close on a regular basis and you kind of want as much working distance as possible. And you really want to be at a proper 200 millimeters because you get all these nice effects like compression of facial features and blowing out the background. You can see the background isn't as blurred and the facial features aren't going to be as compressed or as flattering when you have the same subject size. Even if you do take a few steps forward, then you'll be shooting at wider angle and you're basically not getting what you paid for nor what they advertised. I know some of you are going to ask about the new Tamron, the Mark II, the G2. It has even more severe focus breathing. It seems like it's around 130, 135 millimeters when shooting up close. It has more severe focus breathing than the previous generation did. And for that reason, I don't think we're even going to be reviewing it, formally at least. Okay, let's talk about why this happens now that we've established that it does happen. This is an old Mamiya medium format camera. And the reason I'm going to demonstrate on this particular camera is that uh, it's mechanical and you can see exactly how everything works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the focus and right now it's focused at infinity. If I turn this dial, the bellows expand, moving the lens away from the film and I can focus closer and closer and closer. It even has a little chart here 
that shows me roughly how close I'm focusing wherever, wherever I have it dialed. And this demonstrates a very simple property of how lenses work. When the lens is closer to the sensor or the film plane, you're focused at infinity. If you want to focus on something closer, you have to move the lens optics away. This exact same process happens inside all of your lenses. You just don't see it. Here's another example. Another Mamiya body here, and I've, I don't know why I'm picking all these Mamiya cameras, but right now it's focused at infinity. And as I turn it this way, it focuses closer and closer and closer. And you can see what happens. The lens optics move away from the camera. Even if you turn the focusing ring and the lens doesn't move in any way, this is happening. It's just happening internally. So variations in lens design can make this happen in different ways, but physically the optics have to move further away. Now you have to understand a little bit about how focal length works too. If you have a zoom lens, the reason we say a 24 to 70 or a 70 to 200, that's a measurement in millimeters of the, basically the length of the barrel from wherever the aperture is. So you can see when you zoomed in on 80 millimeters here, the lens gets longer. When you go all the way back to 28 millimeters, it gets shorter. This makes sense, right? Telephoto lenses are long, wide angle lenses are shorter. So we have a bit of a conflict here, right? Now, when we focus close, the lens gets longer. When we zoom to a more telephoto length, the lens gets longer. Both those things make the lens longer. What happens when you have a lens that has all the components built in internally? Here, you can see if I focus at infinity or if I zoom, the size of it doesn't change. So something that can happen with different lens designs is when you focus to infinity, of course, the optics inside the lens need to move further away from the film plane. Where do they go? Well, in some lenses, those optics move into the distance that would be used for the focal length. So if you're at 200 millimeters and it's at infinity, the optics are, you know, back here. And then you focus up close and they move in here and they're stealing length from the focal length. So it might be stealing 65 millimeters from the focal length and taking you from an actual 200 millimeters to 135 millimeters. It doesn't change the millimeter rating that's marked on the lens, but it is changing the physical focal length. Your camera will still report 200 millimeters in the metadata, which is not really true. It could know that you're actually at 135 millimeters or whatever it actually is, but it just chooses not to tell you that. So that's how it works. And right now I'm going to show you how to fix it. So I have my D810 with the new 7200 F28 ED here. And this lens has some focus breathing, but not severe focus breathing. I actually don't have any of my severe focus breathing examples on hand because we just, I just don't like it. So we got rid of them, but I'm going to take a little test video here to just to demonstrate the focus breathing problem. So I'll focus in close on my dad. And now to fix it, I'm going to use an extension tube. If you're not familiar with them, extension tubes are just hollow tubes. They have no optics or anything. They do exactly what the bellows does on this camera. They just move the lens a little bit farther away from the body. That's all they do. But they fix focus breathing problems because now instead of focusing on him at the minimum focusing distance, I'll be able to, the lens will actually be focused at infinity. Like the lens will think it's focusing at infinity because it has all this extension. This is giving the distance. It's, this is moving the optics further away from the camera. So the optics internally can be moved farther back, leaving that room for more zoom, for more focal length. You want to use as much extension as possible. So typically when you buy extension tubes, you'll get them in a set of three like this. This is what I usually see. These are 36 millimeters, 20 millimeters, and 12 millimeters. Do this. Try all three of them on your camera first. And try to focus on your subject. If possible, keep the lens mounted to the tripod. That way you're not changing the distance to the subject. If you get all your extension tubes on there and you cannot successfully focus on the subject, you're realizing the problem with extension tubes. Extension tubes allow your camera to focus closer by moving the optics away from the sensor. 
But there's a side effect in that they lose the ability to focus at further distances, including infinity. But you might not even be able to focus a couple of feet away like this if you have too much extension on there. You want as much extension as possible, but clearly you still need to be able to focus on your subject. So start by putting all three extension tubes on the body. And if that doesn't work, take off the smallest one and work your way down until you have the most amount of extension that will still allow you to focus on the subject. And when you put that between the camera and your body, and then you look at your subject, if the subject is the same size when the camera has extension tubes and the lens is focused at infinity, if the subject is the same size, then your lens does not suffer from focus breathing. If the subject size is bigger, then your lens does have focus breathing. Obviously, the lens is still at 200 millimeters, but now the lens is focused at infinity rather than focused up close, and you can see the subject has become much, much bigger. So we've tested for focus breathing, identified that this lens has some amount of focus breathing, and kind of determined just how much it is at the most extreme amount, and we've learned how we can fix it in a controlled situation. Fixing it is not always that practical. We actually tried to use the previous generation Nikon 70200 in our portrait environment by using extension tubes. And what we found is the extension tubes, they limited the focus range so much that we couldn't use our normal portrait workflow. So for us, we often change distances. We'll move from a tight headshot to a full body shot by zooming and changing distance. And because of the way extension tubes work, we would often change distance just a little bit and realize we could not focus anymore. So the extension tubes will solve the problem, but they take away the flexibility of freely being able to refocus your lens or freely being able to zoom and still focus. However, the extension tubes are useful for curing focus breathing in controlled situations. If you're always taking headshots and you're working at the same distance at the same focal length, you can use extension tubes and completely cure the focus breathing problem of your lens. Who cares? I know a lot of people are going to say, okay, my lens has focus breathing. That's fine. I don't care. And that's great. This is, and, and to some people, this will be an academic discussion. Of course, if your lens is 135 millimeters up close and not truly 200 millimeters, you can move closer and you can get the same subject size. As I mentioned before, you're not getting the same results. But I do acknowledge that that's okay with a lot of people. Some people are okay with the lens that has focused breathing and we all work with the gear that we have. So I hope the extension tube trick does help you in uh, working around the shortcomings of your gear because most people don't get to freely pick any type of gear, but we all kind of try to get the most out of what we have. And that's the point that I wanted to make. Good question is why don't lens manufacturers tell you about the focus breathing? As I mentioned, they could mark it on the lens, they could build it into the metadata to be more truthful about it. They could also advertise it. They could say that this is a 70 to 200 lens at infinity or a uh, 50 to 165 lens up close. I don't know what the exact numbers are, just throwing those out, but they don't do that. Also DxO Mark, who rigorously tests lenses, they also don't test the true focal length of lenses. It's very strange that nobody actually tests these things. So that's why when we test lenses, we do make a point of testing it. Um, it's unfortunate. I think focus breathing exists because it's not standard to tell you. If every lens manufacturer had to report on focus breathing, then they would go out of their way to make sure that their lenses didn't focus breathe. But because most people don't know what it is, and it's not a standard part of marketing a lens, they're kind of able to slip it in there and a lot of people don't notice, even though they're not necessarily getting what they pay for, and even though they might be happier choosing a different lens that didn't have that particular shortcoming. I also wanna warn you, if you hear the term focus breathing coming from the mouth of a filmmaker, they tend to mean something different. For still photographers, focus breathing is losing focus length when working up close. To a filmmaker, focus breathing is the changing of subject size when pulling focus from one part of a scene to another. But of course, as still as photographers, we don't change focus within a single scene and subjects will always get bigger when they're out of focus because of course they become blurry. 
Please subscribe for more free educational videos, tell your friends about it. And of course, if you wanna learn the important aspects of photography, check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, which teaches things like composition, lighting, mood, expression, all the stuff that makes way more of a difference than the precise focus length of your lens. If you get into post-processing, we have books on Lightroom and Photoshop. You can visit sdp.io slash store to pick those up. Uh, you can also get my photography buying guide there, which would have already taught you about focus breathing if you had read it. Uh, thanks so much. And uh, you can also search Tony Northup at Amazon to pick these books up. Bye.